Matatag K-10 Curriculum Science for Quarter 2 Second Periodic Test Reviewer Read each question carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. The skeletal system supports the body and helps us move. What daily activity relies heavily on the bones and joints of your body? Muscles help us move by working with the skeletal system. Which of the following actions is a result of your muscles contracting? The digestive system breaks down food into nutrients that your body uses for energy. What Filipino dish is easiest to digest because it is light and easy on the stomach? Your circulatory system carries oxygen and nutrients throughout your body. What is the main organ responsible for pumping blood to all parts of your body? The respiratory system brings oxygen into the body and removes carbon dioxide. Which of the following activities increases your need to breathe faster? Which two systems work together when you are playing a traditional Filipino game like Patentero that requires running and quick movements? When you are eating food like sinangag and tapa, what body system helps break it down and absorb the nutrients? When you are walking uphill in a hilly area like Tagaytay, your legs start to feel tired after a while. Which body system is responsible for this feeling? After a long day of school, you might feel sleepy and tired. Which system is responsible for transporting oxygen their muscles so you have energy. If a person feels their heart beating fast after climbing several flights of stairs, which two body systems are involved in this action? A farmer in Batangas plants mango trees in his farm. He noticed that the roots of the mango tree are strong and extend deep into the soil. Why are the roots important for the tree? A grade 4 student from Leyte observes the shoot system of a coconut tree. Which of the following best explains the importance of the shoot system for the plant? In a science experiment, students in Mindanao compare two plants, one with roots cut off and one with roots intact. After one week, the plant without roots begin to wilt. What is the most likely reason for this? A child in Ilocos observes that some plants like rice and kangkong have roots growing in water. Why is the root system still important even for plants growing in water? In a visible garden in Cebu, a child noticed that when some plants are uprooted, the leaves quickly dry out and die. Why does this happen? A farmer notices that a certain type of plant thrives 
in the rice fields in Laguna, where the area is often flooded. Based on this information, how should the farmer classify this plant? In a mangrove ecosystem in the Philippines, which of the following animals would most likely be classified as terrestrial? You are visiting a fishing village and see different kind of animals. One of the animals is a bat hanging from a tree. How should this bat be classified based on its habitat? In a classroom activity, students are asked to draw animals living in the Taal Volcano protected area. One of the students draws a Philippine eagle soaring over the volcano. In what habitat does the Philippine eagle primarily live? A grade 4 student from Cebu was asked to create a food chain. They included a tilapia as one of the organisms. Based on the habitat of tilapia, where does this food chain most likely occur? You are observing a rice field in your barangay. What could happen to the food chain if there are too many frogs in this habitat? In a mangrove swamp, crabs and fish thrive in the water, while some birds live in the trees. What will most likely happen if many of the mangrove trees are cut down? In a garden habitat, you notice the caterpillars are feeding on the leaves of plants. After a few days, you see fewer caterpillars and more butterflies. What does this observation tell you about the life cycle of the caterpillar? A community near the seashore observes that fewer fish are being caught in their area. Based on your knowledge of food chains, what could be the most likely reason for this? If you were to visit a rice field and make a list of the animals you see, which of the following will not belong to the habitat of a rice field? Which stage of the life cycle of the butterfly comes right after the caterpillar stage? In comparing the life cycles of a frog and a chicken, which of the following stages is similar in both? If a human baby grows into a toddler, a student, and then an adult, which stage in the life cycle of a frog represents a similar mature stage? In the life cycle of a frog, which habitat is the most important for the tadpole stage in the Philippines? Which part of the food chain would the chicken most likely belong to, based on its diet in rural Philippine areas? A farmer in your barangay notices that the goats in his farm eat only grass, leaves, and vegetables. How would you classify goats based on the food they ate? In a science project, your group observes that the stray cats in your neighborhood eat fish, chicken, and sometimes rice. How would you classify these animals according to their diet? 
A local forest has several animals including deer that eat leaves and fruits as well as eagles that hunt smaller animals. If you were to compare the diet of these animals, how would you classify them respectively? You visit a wet market with your family, and you see vendors selling both pork and fish. You remember that some animals eat both plants and meat. Which of these animals is most likely an omnivore? During a field trip, your class goes to a zoo and sees a monkey eating bananas and a few pieces of meat given by the zookeeper. How would you classify the monkey based on what it eats? Which of the following food chains correctly represents the flow of energy in a Philippine ecosystem? In a food chain found in the Philippine rainforest, a fruit bat eats bananas and is then eaten by an eagle. What role does the eagle play in this food chain? If a Philippine farmer notices a carabao eating grass and later sees an eagle catching a snake, which of the following describes? the role of the carabao in the food chain. In a mangrove ecosystem in the Philippines, if a mudskipper eats algae and is eaten by a heron, what would happen if the number of herons greatly increased? Which of the following organisms is considered an omnivore in a Philippine food chain? That's all for now. Thanks for watching.